man. Right now, live with me on the air is Alistair. What's going on, dude? What's up, Zach? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. So, uh, so tell us what's going on in the world of From Hell. Well, right now we're just things are we're kind of at a standstill at the moment. Um, we did <clears throat> we're actually at this very moment supposed to be on tour in Europe with uh, Atheist and Cadaver and Smart Crown, but you know because of COVID everything's been postponed. So, but that tour has been rescheduled to February. Uh, middle of February to March, so I just, you know, I, we all hope that this COVID thing is past us by then so that we can actually go do the show, and, you know, we hope that things are cool so that people can actually fucking come. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. What a killer fucking lineup, too, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I love playing with these guys. They're they're awesome. They're, they're all just awesome musicians, so I love jamming with them for sure. Yeah, all 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 the, this whole year, dude. Like you know, every band that I've fucking interviewed so far, man, it's it's the same fucking, uh, it's the same fucking thing, man. You know, like everybody had these fucking huge tours, fucking booked, fucking uh, you know, lots of new albums coming out, fucking, just I mean, you know, and uh, fucking Corona, dude, just came in and fucking, fuck, <laughs> devastated everything everything it's 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 just it, it's mind-blowing you know i just I can't even fucking believe it but you know what are you gonna do huh <laughs> yeah yeah for sure man and it's not even just that too like 2020 has just been full of fucking hits left and right dude like it's just if it's not one thing it's a fucking another man yeah this year's just we're getting hit you know we're just I don't know what it is. I, I I can't wait till things calm down a little bit, so that we can get back to living and having a good time. But this whole stay in place thing, I you know, I, fuck, I rarely leave my apartment anymore. <clears throat> Go to the store, that's about it. Get dinner and come home, and then I sit here and uh, work a little bit on music, and I'm uh, actually doing some video stuff these days too. So you know, spend a little bit of time trying to brush up on that and get better at it yeah uh, i watched the video for the witch man that fucking shit is fucking badass dude thanks man yeah we had a lot of fun making that that was a uh, yeah we had a lot of fun making both those videos actually but yeah yeah we had a good time making the witch <laughs> i loved having uh having uh luma and raven on set to to be the witch and baphomet they look fucking awesome <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Tell tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did that uh, how did that come about? Uh, you know, my brain just works overtime always. And you know, after we, you know, when uh, actually when we came back from Russia a couple of years ago, uh, we had two songs for this album that we were that we wanted to test out and see. So we went to uh, Earhammer Studios and we recorded "They Come at Night" and "The Witch." And uh, we were going to shop that as a demo. And so, you know, we were expected to be going in the studio later on in 2018. Um, so just trying to get a jump on things, we, you know, started to shoot a video. So I put, you know, we shot uh, the video for They Come at Night uh, one day and then The Witch the next night. And parts of we, all the forest scene stuff was shot on those two days. And then... You know, over the course of the next year, you know, life just happened, so we didn't quite get around to getting the album recorded in 2018. But, you know, at the end of the year, we were ready, and so in 2019, we started recording it. And, you know, we never released that stuff because we didn't want it to come out before the album did. You know, we didn't want anything to get old. So we just held on to them. And um, so after we recorded the album... Um, you know, we just put the videos, you know, I, I finished putting the, the final touches on the videos, uh, finished, I went in and finished editing them and, and then we needed a few extra shots. You know, the forest scene shots are cool. I really like those a lot. You know, they only go so far, so you need to, you know, add some other, other, uh, story elements to the, to the video. So, uh, you know, I spent some time, you know, over the past year putting that stuff together and so we finally got it all dialed in and then um, um, I had this crazy idea of 
you know, I wanted to, you know, since the album's called Rats and Ravens, I really wanted to have some rats in the video, so I went down to L.A. and, and hired a, a rat wrangler. <laughs> um, actually, the same people who handled the rats in uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. No so shit. So I hired them to, uh, to bring some rats in, and so we have this scene in the video where the witch is saying, you know, see what the Christians have done to me, and, you know, she tears open her flesh, and inside of her flesh are all these rats. So, um, and that's kind of the, you know, the, the gist of the story, you know, right there. So, oh. but, um, um, my friend, uh, Raven, they, um, uh, they've been doing this, uh, she, uh, this, uh, Charles Dickens, uh, fair every year. And she, and they designed this, um, this Baphomet costume and I, I saw it and I thought, oh man. That's just awesome. I got, I got to ask, I got to ask uh, them if they want to be in this video, and and they agreed. So, um, and and then I asked Luma if she wanted to be in it, and she said absolutely. So, um, I just kind of worked out some details of what I was looking for for the story, and uh, finished shooting that part, and then just over the last you know few months, finished editing it, and put it all together. Man, that's fucking badass, dude. And I and I gotta say, man, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula is definitely one of my fucking favorite all time movies, man, for sure. Yeah, mine too. So there was certainly some uh, some uh, influence from that movie in this video. <laughs> God, what a trip, man! I don't know if anybody's gonna pick up on that, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! So. uh so as and uh, also the album art, man, fucking uh, the 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 uh, the art on this album cover is fucking so badass, dude. I gotta ask you about that, man. How did you guys come up with that? Uh, the artwork for the album was designed by a guy named Pete Novak. Uh, he's in uh, and he works down in L.A. Um, he's a um, an illustrator and artist down there, and I met him one year at Monster Palooza which is um, an event that they host, I think, twice a year in L.A., if, you know, just kind of, you know, celebrating monster movies and shit like that. And and so, you know, he does, you know, he, he does lots of stuff. And so he had a booth there selling his artwork, and he had this one piece uh, called the Wendigo, or the Wendigo, and it was just so fucking cool. And I, I thought, man, I need to buy this. And I paid for it, and it's one of the coolest things that I have, and I thought, I'm going to ask this guy if he'll do my album artwork. <laughs> and so I hit him up, and I said, Pete, you know, this is, you know, I'm, I, I really like your work a lot. Um, I have this album that I'm getting ready to put out called Rats and Ravens, and I started telling him about the concept of the story, and so he just jumped up these ideas, and, you know, over the course of about, I don't know, maybe five months or so, well, he started working on it, and then there was a very long break um, before I, you know, we could get back to it. Um, but uh, yeah, he just started, you know, putting this artwork together, and he sent me one of the initial pieces, and the initial piece just blew me away. And it looks nothing like the final, like the final artwork. It mm -hmm. was really just a skeleton sketch of what he was going to create. But the skeleton sketch all by itself was freaking amazing. And I thought, wow, I can't wait till the end of this. And then when we got to the end, I was just blown away. I, I just could not believe what the guy created. So, But I told him that it was about a witch who steals children and reanimates their corpses with rats. So, And then, <laughs> you know, there's some other stuff kind of, you know, like I asked him to create kind of this Hecate kind of head. Also, you know, an image sort of based off Bram Stoker's Dracula, you know, the, the wolf head. The the vampire and the the was it a bat I think I can't remember but I, so I asked uh, Pete to make a, a three faced kind of image and so on the one side is you know like two different versions of the witch and then the the raven right in the middle and then if you look at it, you can see you know there's a rat inside you know you can see a rat tail coming out of the mouth on one side and then a rat coming out on the other and then you can see little eyes. Uh, dotted in between, and I, I, yeah, the guy just does really, really, really great work. I really hope some bands go to him and hit him up for some more artwork because he does great, great stuff. And I was really, really proud of what he 
what he uh, produced for us. Hell yeah, dude! Send me uh, send me his link, and I'll fucking share it around for you too, man. Okay, let's see. It's uh, yeah, I'll send that to you. It's uh, PC. I think he's. I think he's really only on Instagram. You know, because that's where you see art. <laughs> <laughs> so PC Novak, I think, is. Uh, let's see. I think it's at PC Novak on Instagram. So just sent that to you on uh, Messenger. So, um, yeah, the guy does phenomenal work, and so. Um, you know, maybe he'll do some more stuff for us, you know, when we do the next album. Hell yeah. Yeah, when I when I first saw the album cover, uh my my initial thoughts were that it kind of reminded me of those books that I had when I was a kid, scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome, yeah. right? Yeah. I recently <laughs> came across that uh that the book before the movie was resurfaced. Or oh the, yeah, <laughs> they put a movie out. Yeah, I saw. It was, okay. it was a little. It was kind of lackluster, you know. In my opinion, it wasn't quite as scary. It was a little bit too much for children, you know. And it wasn't really the children that that grew up with that. It's us now. <laughs> right. Right. But exactly. It wasn't that scary. It wasn't nearly as scary as the stories. No. The stories no. Were pretty fucking scary. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I remember getting that shit at the fucking book fair at school, man, when I was just a little fucking kid, man, and, like, going home and reading that shit and just fucking freaking the fuck out. Just like, holy fuck, man. This is, like, some- I love them. Those, those stories are really cool. You know, I think there's one there's one about somebody peeling off their skin or something like that or, like, a skeleton walking around in somebody's house. Yeah. Coming to get, coming to get I can't remember the story, but something about, yeah, peeling their skin off or something like that. Um, yeah, it was, that was a cool story. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, fuck, I still got that fucking book, dude. Like that, that fucking thing. <laughs> Hold on to it. It's a treasure. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be worth something someday, man. So, uh, so I got some questions for you coming in from the listeners uh, in the chat room. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Lady Red wants to know where is one of your most favorite places that you've played at. Hmm. Our favorite. Pl- uh, let's see. Good question. Um, Russia was one of my favorite places to play. I think in St. Petersburg and Moscow, those shows were amazing. But we also played some shows in Europe that were that were pretty fucking badass too. Let's see, and some were just uh, well, you know, that tour in Europe we were with uh, with Possessed and Belfagor, and so you know the crowd was just off the hook. And, and we were playing with also with Absu and uh, another band called Cold Raven. And those guys, uh, an Italian band, those guys are really cool to hang out with. Uh, let's see. My favorite show uh, out of all those? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think St. Petersburg was really one of my favorites. That, that show was just great. Um, but... Uh, oh, you know, actually, I take that back. I think our show that we played in the Czech Republic, uh, yeah, those the Eastern Europe, those fans are insane. And yeah, the Czech Republic and Slovakia were my absolute favorite shows. Fuck yeah, man! Another question from uh, Vinny Beanarino wants to know what is the craziest thing you've ever seen happen in the audience at a show. Uh, the craziest thing, well, I just, you know, the, the, you know, the mosh pits, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, just going back to, to the Czech Republic, you know, just, they, they just go absolutely fucking nuts and they get trashed too. Oh my God, they drink so much, (laughs) but you know, they would just get fucked up and just knock shit over. And, you know, when you leave at the end of the night, there's, People, you know, just laying on the floor, you know, legs up on the wall because they're fucking passed out and shit like that. Um, just people just getting just fucked up out of the minds. So, um, I, you know, that's probably, um, you know, because, you know, we get on, you know, once we get off stage, you know, we go in the back and, you know, there's other stuff happening out there. So, but for us, you know, just people just getting fucked up out of the minds and, yeah. Speaking of fucked up, uh, Viogez wants to know, do you like vodka? 
Yes. Yes, I will drink vodka. <laughs> um, I, I don't drink it a lot, but I do like it. And the Russians drink the fuck out of, out of vodka. Oh, my God. It, it just every night. Every night the Russians had vodka. And, yeah, they live on it. It's like water. <laughs> what? We went into a place that was like a, called Globus. It was like a giant Costco over there. And they had an aisle that was maybe 50 yards long. All vodka. Like, how, how many different kinds of vodka can you come up with? <laughs> they, had, they had 50... 50 yards of vodka in this store. Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ, man. That's a lot of fucking vodka, dude. Yeah, they can they can pack it away, man. They can pack it away. It is that is a no shit statement. <laughs> well, for you uh personally, what is your favorite drink of choice? Uh I'm I'm a beer guy. I really love beer. I really like Racer 5. Uh that's usually my go-to when I go to venues is Racer 5. Hell yeah, man. All right. I got another question. Uh, Lady Red wants to know, bubble baths or showers? <laughs> showers? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck has time for Lady bubble baths? Lady Red bath? loves the bubble baths. <laughs> Maybe I'll join Lady Red in the bubble bath, but by myself, I'm taking a shower. <laughs> there, there you go, Lady Red. <laughs> Uh, she also wants to know how many instruments can you play? Um, do air drums count? <laughs> I don't know. I guess. <laughs> well, I play the air drums extremely well. Um, mostly just guitar. Um, I yeah, I'm just a guitar player. You know, I I guess I play guitar and I sing. Um, I I could play bass, but I I would never claim to be a bass player. You know, I, I would end up playing bass like a guitar, and I just, I, I think the function of bass is very different than what the guitar is supposed to do. So, yeah, I'm a guitar player, and I my other instrument is guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, another question with Halloween coming around the corner, uh, any crazy haunted uh, venues that you've played at? We would love to do that. We would love to play, you know, any sort of, you know, haunted mansions or haunted festivals or anything like that just you know at at the moment none of that kind of thing is going on but we would actually you know bring our own kind of halloween show the closest we had we played a halloween show a couple of years ago with hellstar uh, at the up yeah at the uptown in oakland and uh we had our stage show there and and when we usually when we do the local shows i had throw on a pretty good show and i have zombie dancers who get up there with us and so I have these lovely beautiful girls who wear very little they uh, you know put on a black robe and and, and a black thong and then uh, baphomet pasties and then smear themselves in blood and they have corpse paint on and and they have a good time fuck yeah man but that's that's what that's generally what we well that's what we want to do for Halloween what's funny is we actually end up doing that at Christmas <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> our Christmas show every year is is probably our best show here in in uh, San Francisco. Although we didn't play it last year, but we played it. We played this Christmas show for Carla Levey. Uh, Carla Levey is the daughter of Anton Levey, the uh, founder of the Church of Satan in San Francisco. Fuck yeah! And she asked us to uh, play her Black X Mass party one year. And uh, I, I actually that night that she asked me it was the night I met King Diamond. Oh shit! Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. So uh, I'll tell you this story. We were at uh, went to see King Diamond in 2015 uh, at the Warfield, and I have a bunch of friends who know King Diamond. We were you know me and my girlfriend were there. And we're hanging out and you know I was trying to get my friends who know King to you know. You know, help me meet King, you know, I want to meet King, and, you know, everybody's running around, everybody's busy, and then, you know, the show was just amazing, awesome, and so we're hanging out, waiting at the end, and then they're kicking you out of the building, like, you gotta leave, you gotta leave, we stood in line, we were the last people in line to get merch, so we got our merch, and we're like, well, let's go hang out by the bus, maybe we'll see him out there, 
So we're standing out back, hanging out there, and we see a few people come out, and then we see Mike Weed walk by. It's like, oh, hey, look, there's Mike Weed. And we shake his hand, like, hey, man, how's it going? Blah, 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 blah. You know, and he, as he walks by, I'm like, man, that sucked. I don't want to meet King Diamond like that. I was like, fuck it, let's get out of here. I don't want, you know, I'll meet him the next time he comes to town. And so we left. Me and my girlfriend, we take off, and we go to uh, Tommy's Joint, a uh, pretty famous restaurant in San Francisco. And we're sitting there having dinner, just doing our thing. And, you know, a couple friends come through. We see them and they leave. And just as we're about to leave, this guy comes over and puts his hand on my girlfriend's shoulder and goes, How did you enjoy the show? And I look up, and King Diamond is standing at my table. Holy shit. I about lost my shit, man. <laughs> I was 16 years old all over again. It was great. <laughs> But yeah, King Diamond came over and started talking to us and said, hey, what's going on, you know, and talked to him for a little bit. I told him about my first album called Ascent from Hell, and he's a character in in the, in that story, um, or I named a character after him. There's Father Peterson, just like King Diamond named uh, a character in his, Abigail, uh, uh, the, Le, the Le Fays, you know, which... He named after, you know, I, I would assume he named after Anton LaVey. Um, so I said, well, you know, you're a character in my story. I named I named my character Father Peterson. Uh, he thought that was pretty cool. And so, you know, he's getting ready to eat dinner, and and he's sitting at his table is Carla LaVey. And, and, you know, I'm telling King Diamond that my band is called From Hell. And she looks at him and she goes, your band is called From Hell? I said, yeah. She goes, do you want to play my black x mask party on Christmas night? Yes, we do. <laughs> Fuck Without yeah, Without hesitation, man. yes, we do. I didn't even ask the band. I just said, yeah, we're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I was not about to say no in front of King Diamond. I was not about to go, oh, you know, let me call the band, see if everyone's going to be in town that night. Yes, we will play the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. And from then on, uh, we played our show three times. And I got to say, those are the best shows that we play in, in, in the Bay Area. The show's just packed every time, and everyone, everyone has a great time. And, yeah, so we just love it. So, you know, I definitely want to thank King Diamond and Carla the Bay for those. That's really cool, man. Love King Diamond, dude. I wonder what the hell he's doing right now because uh, I know, like, he released a, a new song earlier this year, and then... All this COVID shit happened, and I don't know. Like, I haven't seen anything about him in the news or anything since. Yeah, he might just be hanging low. He might yeah. be, you know, fuck this. I'm not going outside. <laughs> I don't go outside, not unless I have to. Of course, here in California, it's really bad right now with all the smoke. But, but yeah, he's probably just laying low at the moment. And then, you know, trying to release something right now, I, you know, as I found out again the hard way, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a hard, bad time to release music, or just tough time. We thought it might be a good time because people are stuck at home, not able to go anywhere, so they're going to sit there and listen to music. But really, you have to tour. Without touring to support to support the album, it's just kind of, uh, you know, people want to see live. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Um, speaking of live, uh, another question from the listeners: uh, Where would you like to tour next if you could uh, if you could play anywhere? Well, um, I, I can't wait for this tour in uh, Europe to happen again. I would like to tour Russia again, but I'd really like to go to Japan and South America. I think those would just be amazing places to play. So, you know, maybe hopefully down the line, you know, we can, you know get our shit together or not not get our shit together but you know figure out how to get to these places to to tour because uh, i just you know we've gotten a pretty pretty amazing response from from uh fans in south america and um and then when we toured russia uh a few people had heard of us but people really really liked what we were doing over there and so i can't wait to go back oh yeah Another question uh, from Beans. He wants to know, do you have any pre-show rituals, like you uh, smoke a joint or have a pee right before you play, anything like that? Um, I usually, I like to have at least one drink just to kind of calm the nerves a little bit. 
But I definitely like to take a zen moment and just sit uh, backstage for about 15 minutes pretty quietly before I get on stage. You know, if, if time permits, oftentimes things are really chaotic and you just you just can't do that. But, you know, when I get the opportunity, I like to just, just zen in the back for a good 10 or 15 minutes and just be quiet, just kind of build myself up and then go out on stage and 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 put on a put on the best show that i can hell yeah man hell yeah well for people out there listening uh where can they go to find out more information about you guys and uh pick up some merch and stuff uh they can go to scourge records.com uh s-c-o-u-r-g-e records uh that's where you can find uh cds and merchandise for the band uh, we also have a website for the band uh, from hell.net. Um, you know, news will be in both places, I, I imagine. Uh, but yeah, the scourgerecords.com uh, for digital downloads, Bandcamp, iTunes, Spotify, in it, wherever you can, you know, wherever you buy music, uh, you should be able to find it. Hell yeah! Is this a but the physical copies? Physical copies are are. Um, we do have physical distribution, but, you know, all the record stores are closed, so couldn't really get the records out to the stores for people to buy. So they may end up in the stores here pretty soon, uh, but otherwise you can certainly um, uh, contact Scourge Records for for um, uh, physical CDs. And then uh, we also have you know, hoodies and uh, T-shirts. We just got some T-shirts, and today we just got... Uh, some from hell embroidered patches and that, that look pretty cool so pretty stoked on that so i think we're gonna have a, a package deal or a bundle deal that's that's going to be available next week um um it might actually i don't know it might be available today but i'm not i'm not positive nice man uh what about vinyl do you guys have this record on vinyl not yet the only problem is vinyl is crazy expensive and it would be a double record so what I might do, uh, we have two or three, we have at least two more songs that we're going to release uh, at some point, um, and uh, when those come out, uh, because there's so much time on a record, what we might do is put the two extra songs uh, on, on vinyl, uh, and then also uh, for the first album, Ascent from Hell, there's the interludes, the, the things that happen between each song. So I, I have some of that stuff. So we'll probably take a, a, a collection of those weird, you know, uh, interlude parts between all the songs on A Symptom Hell and Rats and Ravens and put that on, you know, side four. <laughs> because it's going to be, the, the album is too long for, for um, one album. So I have to, it would have to get split over two albums. So... You know, when we get around to releasing those other two songs here within the next month or something like that, then uh, eventually we'll put those on an album and release it that way. Hell yeah, dude. That'd be badass, man, because I know this album this album cover itself would be really cool to look at on a fucking uh, big-ass fucking vinyl, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that uh, that would be cool. That would be really cool. So, And there might even be new artwork for it, too. You know, so, uh, you know, we might end up doing uh, a re-release at some point, you know, with these extra songs on it, just because we have them, you know, and would like to put them out. So, but they weren't they weren't right for the album when we when we finished it last year. So, right on, man. All right, well, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to let your fans know? Thanks for listening. Uh, you know, I appreciate everyone who's out there who's checking checking the album out. Uh, thank you, Zach, for for hooking up this interview and and all the promoters. Uh, you know, Vlad uh, Novacek. Uh, I, I think I butchered his name, but uh, <laughs> one yeah. of my friends from Poland named Vlad. Yeah, I I, I totally got his name wrong. Yeah, I'll just get the Vlad part right. I know I can do that. <laughs> Vlad's badass, dude. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he you know he did a lot of work you know for me you know spreading things around the radio and. And then I have my uh, my social media guy Ray. He, you know, so you know he's done all kinds of you know posts for me, Ray and Michael Brandwald. So you know, I just want to thank all those people for you know really helping, you know, do what they can for this album. You know, and if without them, 
you know, things would be so much harder. So, but yeah, I just appreciate, you know, you and, and Vlad and all these people who have helped out and yeah, thanks so much. And especially the fans. So I think that's about all. Hell yeah, dude. Well, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag? Sure. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is from hell and you are listening to metal devastation radio. Okay. I'm ready. This is Alistair Sin of the band From Hell, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. (laughs) Fuck yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, dude. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more From Hell for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? Rock on. All right, Zach. Thanks so much. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Cheers. Have a killer night. Cheers, bro. There you have it, folks. From Hell Live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Motherfucking Radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them wherever the fuck you can. Make your neighbors fucking hate you. If you don't fucking see U-Haul trucks everywhere tomorrow, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, but you got problems. You got serious, serious fucking problems. <laughs>